Marguerite Yourcenar's Memoirs of Hadrian is a profoundly reflective and intimate portrayal of the Roman Emperor Hadrian, constructed as a fictional autobiography. The novel delves into the complexities of power, mortality, and the human condition, presenting Hadrian as both a ruler and a philosopher. Through his reflective narrative, the novel transcends the historical genre, offering a deep meditation on the nature of leadership, the inevitability of decline, and the pursuit of wisdom. Hadrian's narrative voice is introspective, as he writes a letter to his successor, Marcus Aurelius. This framework allows the novel to explore Hadrian's thoughts and experiences with a sense of immediacy and authenticity. The emperor's reflections on his life, his accomplishments, and his failures are not just personal musings but also universal considerations on what it means to live a meaningful life. The novel's structure gives readers access to Hadrian's inner world, where his thoughts meander between the past and the present, between personal and political concerns. One of the central themes of the novel is the tension between power and mortality. Hadrian, who has achieved the pinnacle of power as the ruler of the Roman Empire, is acutely aware of his own mortality. This awareness colors his every decision and reflection, lending a melancholic tone to his recollections. His achievements, such as the consolidation of the empire's borders, his architectural projects, and his cultural patronage, are tempered by the realization that they are all ephemeral, destined to be forgotten or destroyed by time. This tension between the transient nature of life and the desire for lasting legacy is a recurring motif in the novel, highlighting the paradox of power, the more Hadrian tries to control and shape the world, the more he is reminded of the limits of that control. Hadrian's relationship with Antinous, a young Greek who becomes the emperor's beloved companion, is another significant aspect of the novel. Their relationship is portrayed with tenderness and complexity, offering insights into Hadrian's emotional life. The bond between them transcends the usual dynamics of power and passion, representing a profound connection that deeply affects Hadrian. The tragedy of Antinous's death, and Hadrian's subsequent deification of him, reveals the emperor's vulnerability and his struggle to find meaning in loss. This personal sorrow becomes a lens through which Hadrian contemplates the nature of love, death, and memory, further deepening the novel's exploration of the human condition. Yersinar's portrayal of Hadrian is also marked by his philosophical inquiries. The emperor's reflections on the nature of the gods, the workings of fate, and the pursuit of wisdom reflect the influence of Stoicism, Epicureanism, and other ancient philosophies. These philosophical musings are not mere intellectual exercises, they are integral to Hadrian's attempt to understand his place in the world and to make sense of his experiences. The novel thus becomes not just a historical narrative but also a philosophical one, where the questions of how to live and how to die are central concerns. In addition to its thematic depth, Memoirs of Hadrian is notable for its richly detailed depiction of the ancient world. Yorsinar's meticulous research is evident in her vivid descriptions of the cities, landscapes, and cultures of the Roman Empire. This attention to detail helps to immerse the reader in Hadrian's world, making his reflections and experiences all the more tangible and relatable. Ultimately, Memoirs of Hadrian is a meditation on the passage of time, the burdens of leadership, and the search for wisdom. Through Hadrian's introspective narrative, the novel invites readers to reflect on their own lives and the broader human experience. Yersinar's work transcends the boundaries of historical fiction, offering a timeless exploration of what it means to be human in a world that is constantly changing, where the only certainty is the inevitability of death.